Hey there, Frisbee family. Thank you for tuning in once again to the next installment of Morning Round, part of the Hey, it's a Disc Golf News podcast series on the OTB Podcast Network. I'm Greggy Biscuits. I am joined this morning by the one and only Ella Hansen. Good morning, Ella. Good morning, Greg. How you doing? I'm doing good. We uh, woke up with the sun, ready to, to move plastic and, and make dreams come true all day. Uh, how about yourself? Love How's your it. morning going? Uh, pretty good. Yeah, just um, trying to get myself ready to go to Vegas pretty much. Yeah, quite a few things most likely on the to-do list. Um, Ella Hansen, one throw, <laughs> University of Oregon duck, turned mm. pro in 2020, just to give people a little more background. And yeah, last year was your first full year. Rolling on tour, some mm-hmm. notable performances. Got that podium finish at U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championship, so that was dope. Uh, are you a morning person? Um, I can be. I think I I tend to be more productive at night and stuff, and I sometimes I get on a kick, you know, and stay up until like two a.m., which is mm-hmm. probably not great. But I I'm not the grumpiest person in the morning. I know, but probably not. A super morning person as much as i as you i wish i could you, say I you am. wouldn't che- you wouldn't check that box on the uh, probably not, on the, on probably the not. <laughs> well what do you use to get going in the morning what's your what's your fuel of choice um i honestly i've never really been a coffee person as a kid i actually like hated the smell of it my mm-hmm. grandma was like huge coffee person and so every time i would go to her house i would like be very upset at how it smelled but um, it's grown on me since then. Uh, but I don't, I don't usually, you know, do coffee or tea or something. Um, but if I'm if I'm really tired, I'll do coffee. And honestly, like when I'm playing, like when I'm playing rounds, I like to have a little caffeine. I feel like it helps me stay focused and mm-hmm. not dip as much as I would if I didn't have caffeine. Well, with all the Dunkin' and Starbucks, we saw. Kevin Jones and Calvin drinking last year. I think it's got to be doing something for added yeah. distance. And you're you're no stranger to to throwing for yourself. But yeah, yeah it probably just sharpens up the whole game, maybe a little bit. Juliana mm-hmm. Corver's on matcha, so mm-hmm. maybe that's a that's really like mainlining. Yeah, I I use noon a lot, like the little tablet things that mm-hmm. they have caffeine in there, so it's nice to feel extra hydrated and caffeinated. But um, yeah. So, but you probably have a go-to bagel maybe in the morning. Ooh, that, yes, my go-to bagel. I do love to get bagels in the morning. That definitely gives me a kick. I am a sesame bagel toasted with cream cheese kind of person. So okay. I usually get two actually. Plain, two sesame. You going with plain cream cheese? Yeah. Or you go with the flavored plain. cream cheese. Yep. No, I don't really like the flavored cream cheese. Definitely am going plain. It's the good stuff. I, I, in one of my past lives, I was a, you know, bagel shop artist. And so mm. you, you, it eventually you have to go beyond plain. You have to try yeah. everything on the menu. And there's some yeah. good, there's some good ones if it's not overdone with the flavoring. Yeah. There are, there are some good ones for sure. But, uh, I think it, you know, having, having a go-to that's pretty simple is nice. <laughs> right. So then we, when people go out to grab bagels, they know, boom, sesame, toasted, plain mm-hmm. cream cheese, two yeah. of them. It's easy to make me happy. <laughs> and that should be a pretty sustainable snack. How are you going to set up in the van? You're starting to get that going. Or have you thought it about, thought about, you know, you got to feel your body. This is something that's come up a few times on these morning round podcasts, how important it is to remember to eat, remember yeah. to stay hydrated. Really. It's just like, cause you're so busy and you're so focused on, you know, getting ready for your round and, you know, probably thinking about strategy and obviously getting in putting practice and field work. But, uh, we got to have some fuel. So how are you setting that up in the van this year? Yeah, I'm going to have, you know, like a camp stove, going to have um fridge, you know, all I, I love to cook. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll have it all set up, um, able to cook and stuff. And 
Yeah, I, I haven't really put a lot of thought. I, I've thought a little bit about like, oh, I like when I'm cooking at home, like, oh, I can't, I won't be able to make this on the road or something. But um, no, no souffles. No, <laughs> but I, I have some good recipes up my sleeve. I'm not like a huge breakfast person, um, mm-hmm. but I think I'm going to have to be because from what I've heard, FPO is going to be teeing off in the morning this year again. So, or yeah. for a good amount of the tournament. So gonna have to get used to eating something early because if i don't you know it's not gonna be good (laughs) so uh you have you have your choice what time do you go play your ideal round you know no pressure just can you go ahead and get your round in i like the early afternoon um Mm -hmm. gives me some time to do stuff in the morning i know people like the morning because then you can be productive after which is like fine Mm -hmm. um but yeah, I think I I think I lean towards the the afternoon. <laughs> so that again, I feel like yes, yeah, so you guys were in the morning most of the time last year. Well, for the pro or, tour, no, no, you, you, were, yeah, in you were in the you were in the afternoon. That's what I thought. Yeah. So again, yeah. and that was also interesting because the conditions would change so much during the day. Yeah, and so it'd be like a way different course by the time it's two o'clock. For sure. Yeah, I think that. Probably morning rounds are gonna have a little less wind, which will will be nice. Um, you know, but from what I heard, Vegas is gonna be women in the afternoon. Not mm-hmm. sure. I don't really know what's so happening. It's gonna be, so it's gonna switch kind of back and forth. Yeah, and not just yeah. be one way or the other the whole season. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that should be more fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, last year at Vegas, it was like not windy at all for the whole practice week. And then it was just like ripping for every, every day of the actual tournament, which seems. Yeah. You the know. course is, the course is definitely known for being windy mm-hmm. and then some. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you, you're opting for the minivan life. Is that correct? That is correct. What's your, what's your, yeah. What's your, what's your what vessel of choice there? 2004 Toyota Sienna. So mm, it's an old nice. bird, but. Um, seasoned. Yeah. Very seasoned. Uh, but it, it runs well. It's got a lot of space, got a lot of room for me and my stuff. So hopefully nice. it'll push me on through, through the season. And so tell, describe a little bit your approach last year. So you're kind of, again, not quite a full tour, mm-hmm. you know, more strategically hitting runs of tournaments. Describe going to some of the bigger tournaments last year. Yeah. So I kind of, Vegas was my first pro tour. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I thought I should do it. And I was kind of planning on playing the West Coast swing and just sort of seeing how I stacked up against the field. Um, Had some good success on the West Coast swing and then uh, ended up playing just a few more pro tours sort of sprinkled throughout the season played Ledgestone and uh, Maple Hill and Green Mountain Championships and um, the Throw Pink Women's Disc Golf Disc- Championship. Oh. I, don't, uh, I don't know what it's called. I just call it USCGC. Some of these, these titles. <laughs> that's, what yeah. it, that's what it felt like to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of I kind of just hopped, hopped in on a couple uh, sections of the tour. So this year I'll be doing pretty much the full tour. That's exciting. And obviously, we're happy to have you on Team OTB once again, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, happy to happy to make this part of your part of your dream happen. All right, mm-hmm. so have you named the van? I haven't. I have yeah, so had it, some ideas, but I feel that I need more uh, ideas because I've never been like a car naming person. But I always like it when other people have names for their cars. You know. Right. So you know, maybe it's a maybe it's a shoe that fits. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Maybe as you get closer to to get it wrapped up, it'll you have a yeah. moment of inspiration. I think someone else should just name it for me, and I'll be like, okay, sure. I think Instagram name. would take care of that in an afternoon. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> um, I noticed you mentioned your pr- product design degree. Mm-hmm. That's from that's from Oregon. Where yes, you were the ultimate superstar <laughs> and college ch- national champion. Yes. Yep. Very awesome. National and, champions. And so talk about your, uh, your degree and how yeah. that worked as in your disc golf life. Yeah. Uh, it, a little, a little bit of carryover. Um, so I studied product design, which is kind of like industrial design. 
Um, and I also studied digital arts, double major. So honestly, the digital arts definitely helps a little more in the uh, mm -hmm. disc golf world, doing some video work and graphic mm -hmm. design and, and st stuff like that. But um, the product design definitely helps in the van. I've kind of, my plan is to uh, go for the minivan life for basically this season. And I'm hoping to upgrade to a full sized, um, you know, sprinter type van for next year. So I'm guessing it'll come more in handy next year. Cause I kind of tried to stay a little more minimalist in the sure. build this year. Um, I think, but I think it definitely was helpful. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to go too far and then have to really rearrange stuff too much. So yeah, kinda, I mean the building this, blocks. this van's pretty old. It, you know, it, it doesn't have a whole lot of value and <laughs> you know, I don't want to have put in, thousands and thousands of dollars into it and then have it break yep. down <laughs> yeah so. but you know we're not gonna we're not gonna focus on what can go wrong we're gonna focus <laughs> on what can go right yeah uh, so it's a big off-season schedule how you've you've kept yourself busy uh this mm -hmm. whole time playing some mm -hmm. tournaments we had the uh we saw you in stockton at yep. the nti mm -hmm. your team took it down strong performance there and um you've been getting around the Bay Area a little bit. So we'll talk about your latest visit to Stockton here in a second, but tell us about uh, Oyster Bay a little bit. You've been getting some practice out there, right? Yeah. Oyster Bay is a super fun course. Um, it's like, for those that aren't in the Bay Area, it's a new course on a old landfill. So there's not a whole lot of trees and uh, other life around there, but um, a lot of trees that have been recently planted. So it's like one of those courses that in 10 years is going to be drastically, drastically different. Um, but it's got some, some fun, simple, challenging holes. I've been using it for mostly upshot practice. Um, there's a set of short tees and a set of long tees. So uh, I've been, I like to play sort of a double round in the yellows and the blues at the same time give me some more of that long practice and a little bit of the mm -hmm. upshot practice so it's been pretty fun um and it's well located um easy mm -hmm. to get to it's free so you gotta love that and yeah it's it's, it's a good course shout out leonard muse uh, yep big part of making that possible uh, he's also a big influence on our otbo layout mm -hmm. and you recently were back in stockton because yep. it's great. And uh, you were walking the course with Leonard. How yes. did that go? It was really cool, honestly. I have sort of thought about course design before, but I had never actually seen the process of what of what it really looks like. So mm -hmm. um, and he's Leonard, a great person to learn from. Very yeah. technical. Yeah. He he, you know, told me about all the different lines he was looking at and you know, why they would want to put the T here instead of, you know, 20 feet to the left or, or something like that. And talking about flow and, you know, walkouts between holes and which holes they're planning to keep from last year. And, you know, some of the holes might basically be the same, but played almost in reverse. Mm -hmm. So that could be pretty fun. Um, there are definitely some new holes that I was really liking uh, that he was yep. showing me. and. I'm really excited to see what the, the final layout ends up being because, you know, he sort of showed me 18 holes, but he he basically was like, it, it might be like 50 to 75% different by the time right. it's actually finalized. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. And it was really cool to get a, a glimpse into that and be able to give my feedback on what I think is a good hole. So it was really, really a fun experience. Yeah, it's a great resource for Leonard, too, to have a pro that he can walk the course with and describe those situational golf uh, shots. Mm -hmm. And only four holes, I believe, were scheduled to be kept from the original layout. So it's yeah. going to be a lot of new golf, a lot of new land that's being utilized. And mm -hmm. I, know his, I know his gears are turning, so we, we like that. And I know he's going to come up with a great uh, course that's going to challenge the pros because... As far as the feedback we got, people really enjoyed uh, the layout last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really excited to see. I mean, part of this expansion is getting more uh, fans, getting more spectators. And I think that that is super exciting, too, because, you know, I, 
I felt like the crowd in Stockton last year was one of the best crowds that I saw mm-hmm. out on tour. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see how much they can sort of expand the capacity for that. Cause I think that that honestly at this point is like one of the limiting factors in disc golf. You know, you look at like the world's course from last year at the fort, like that's a pretty freaking hard course to get spectators in on. And like, yeah, you know, I think that that, that's such an interesting compromise between, you know, some, some players don't want to be having this sort of open golf course kind of, uh, Mm -hmm. feel, but it also allows much more infrastructure for getting spectators in there and, you know, not squeezing them in. So it's, it's an interesting sort of push and pull there. Yeah. I know they're definitely expecting to have way more spectators this year because that was still relatively early and we're still relatively in the midst of the COVID pandemic. And so mm-hmm. people are still not even sure how many spectators they'd be able to have last year. And then right. it, out it was they could max it out and then they want to go bigger and better mm-hmm. this coming year. So it should be fun. And of course we'll have plenty of festivities planned. Yeah. Here, yeah. here at the I'm shop. Here at the new expanded uh, OTV warehouse, which seems to just change by the minute. That's sick. <laughs> um, okay, so heading back on the road, what was your favorite course last year? Hmm, good question. Um, I think Maple Hill, probably. Um, I really like the OTV course. Um, mm-hmm. But great I conditions think, also that week. We didn't yeah. we really wanted it to, to be windier for y'all. <laughs> and it was kind of it was kind of tame and really really pleasant. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard to uh sort of design to the wind and then you don't get mm-hmm. it. But also, if you don't mm-hmm. design to the wind, it's like could be impossible basically. Right. Um. Yeah, it was it was pretty tame that week, but I liked it. It was a fun fun course. It felt like every hole was was attackable. Um. And yeah, I mean, I think Maple Hill is like a pretty easy answer. It's it's a beautiful course. It feels like it's, you know, it benefits my game as a distance thrower. But also, if you can't really throw it that far, you still have a chance. It's not just like, okay, mm-hmm. you're not going to cash at this tournament or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just beautiful. It's an be- absolutely beautiful course. Um, it was super think- fun to play there. Again, I've never been there, but I feel like from coverage, it's one of those courses that does a good job of balance of left to right shots, right to left shots, the distance, the accuracy, you know, testing all these elements. And like you said, like you alluded to earlier, that's a great course, but it's not the easiest to spectate. Yeah. Because of the tightness of the woods and uh, just the area that they've allotted makes for amazing golf. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's an awesome course. It's a fine line that the pro tour and their ilk have to have to tow, but that's their problem, yeah. right? Yep. <laughs> uh, what was your favorite bagel on the road? Sesame mm. toasted plain cream yeah. cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have to say, I mean, I've had some. Is there good a particular West shop? Coast. Yeah. I've had some good West Coast bagels. I actually had a pretty decent bagel at USDGC. It was like from this <laughs> little like freeway side bagel store uh in like rockland or something um, there you go it's pretty good and uh but i have to say east coast bagels definitely are superior to west coast bagels um honestly grocery store bagels from the east coast are better and uh one of my so i actually have a, a mental health not mental health but a mental toughness coach named mm-hmm. uh, Tina Booth. She's awesome. And uh, we met up. She's local to uh, Massachusetts area. So we met up before Maple Hill and she brought me some sesame bagels and cream cheese and it was pretty great. <laughs> that was probably the deal. best one. Yeah. Yeah. You get that New York style. You know, they, they boil it just right. Mm-hmm. Perfectly toasted. It's, it's the good Chewy stuff. on the inside. Yep. Yep. Crunch on the out. Love a good bagel. Uh, lifetime athlete. Mental game, obviously, you're taking care of it if you have a, a mental toughness coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, tough sports question here. Jog your memory. I saw your Instagram posts. When was the last time you hit a home run? 
It's been a while. Probably like T-ball, to be honest. I was never that good at baseball. I just really liked playing it. Yeah. Um, so, was that the first sport expo- you were exposed to? Or? Yes. Baseball. I started playing T-ball when I was, yeah, like four or something. <laughs> um, I love baseball. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really have the power to to hit home runs, to be honest. Um, Inside the Parker still counts as a home run, though. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I think that, like, looking back on it, I feel like if I had, like, actually played softball instead Mm -hmm. of baseball, I, I, like, maybe could have played in college or something. Mm -hmm. Um, But I didn't. But you did did play in college eventually. Ella, tell us a little bit how you went from baseball to Ultimate Frisbee. Yeah, so my middle school, I grew up in Seattle, and Youth Ultimate was actually a big, big thing there. It still is. Um, so my middle school had, I went to a small school, but we still had three Ultimate teams. Mm. And naturally, I thought it was really stupid at first. Mm-hmm. And then I got recruited to play one day because they didn't have enough girls. It was like a co-ed team. Um, mm-hmm. And I had a really good time. And I kept playing on that team for the rest of the year. And then the next year, I tried to play baseball, ultimate, and run track in the spring, which didn't really work out very well for me. It was a little little bit busy as a seventh grader. Um, So that's when I ended up stopping baseball. Um, And yeah, that's kind of where the the ultimate obsession really started. Wow. So early on, disc sport obviously the rotational sports working for you. Yeah. But it's a, yeah, it's a great workout. So you build all this great uh, cardiovascular health, which I'm sure translates, you know, to a good foundation for disc golf. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously you had your competitive juices flowing and that's <laughs> a sense of pressure and, you know, kind of quick, quick response. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely was a very competitive kid. Um, I, I wanted to do well. I wanted to win. And uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. It's good if you're going to be a pro athlete to have that sort of mentality because it can it can go a long way with the just visualization of success and that, mm-hmm, that pursuit. Mm-hmm. I think so. <laughs> uh, and and that brings you back onto Team Dismania mm-hmm. on the touring team. Yep. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. And so the, again, you were... Uh, pro team last year and now it's an upgrade to mm-hmm. tour team yeah i mean last year kind of was a little bit of a leap of faith for both of us because i didn't really have a whole lot of supporting evidence to to show that i was going to be a good player um mm-hmm. and you know it was in march that you went over 900 correct yeah yeah yeah, yeah so it was it was a bit of a bit of a risk, I think, but um, it paid off, and I really am glad that I signed with this mania. Um, and yeah, so I'll be with them for the next two years. Um, I'm really excited this year. Going to have a rookie of the year disc and um, a sort of tour series disc coming out. So those are both really exciting for me. Um, Do we know yeah. the tour series disc? Huh. Do we know which Tory Series disc it'll be? I or? don't know. I don't know. I do know the the Rookie of the Year disc. <laughs> um, uh, can you tell us or no? Uh, I don't know if I. I mean, <laughs> I probably can. I don't. I don't see why not. It's going to be an Enigma. Um, okay, cool. Which is cool. Yeah. So I'm excited can roll, about that. I know you can roll an Enigma. Yeah, I do. I do like to roll an Enigma. Um, I also like it as just a distance driver. It's like, it's a nice. It's very similar to a DD3, but it's like flippier. So mm-hmm. um, it, you know, it kind of acts like a beat in DD3, which is, it's a really nice disc for me. I yeah. like to throw my DD3 and oftentimes I'm like, wow, I should have thrown my Enigma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that too. I think that too. When I'm like, oh, I want to get some, some turn on this. And then I'm like, no, nah, no, it didn't turn at all. <laughs> yeah. But good glide, dependable distance yeah. driver, definitely yep. a solid disc. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think of the new Iron Samurai? It's sweet. Um, I really like it. It's it this feels holding, like this is me holding one up uh, <laughs> as they're sold. <laughs> I can go grab one if I if I need. Okay, you got yours. Um, yeah, I really like them. Um, they're like yeah, a little more overstable than the the stock MD3s. 
Um, Which I found to be very straight. Yeah. The, the new Italian plastic. MD3. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like it's, it's a fun disc because you can like really rip it straight and it's going to push straight and still finish left. Um, and I really like the, the plastic actually, the, the feel is really nice. Like mm -hmm. the sea line plastic is beautiful and it like does not break down it. Like I still have some, like I have some of the original prototypes that are like, I've been thrown into trees left and right and still look like basically brand new. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the new glow plastic, it feels really nice in the hand. It's a little grippier than mm -hmm. the sea line plastic, which I think is good. Um, it's a good option to have. I haven't tested out the glow pro uh, properties yet, but I th I've heard yeah, they, they glow pretty good. Like they have some decent glow. Yeah. The, uh, color yeah. glow there. Mm -hmm. but again, I'm, I guess I'm more familiar to the Innova Dismania color glow. So we'll yeah. to see how this stuff lights up. And then there's a little bit of a difference I heard between the blue and the pink. Yeah, um, my blackness. I don't, I haven't really looked into that too much. But my blue one, is, like I have two blues and one pink. The two blues are like pretty, a little bit domey, and then mm -hmm. the, the pink one is almost puddle topped. Um, yeah, that's the sort of trend that we've yeah. been seeing. A little bit uh, gummier and domier on the blue, mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. flatter on the pink. But yeah, seems like a good disc. Obviously excited. To get to throw that and let's talk about this getting ready to head to vegas that's coming yeah. up uh, we it just had all star up. we just had all star weekends when, mm -hmm. when are you leaving i'm leaving on saturday so i know the course is sort of open for practice right now but really getting open for real on saturday so hoping to get there give myself you know three or four, or four or five practice days and uh yeah, it should be good. It's it's interesting for me going back to a tournament that I have actually played before because mm -hmm. all of last year was just new course, new course, new course. So um, it's it, it'll be interesting. I, I like take notes for each hole on my phone and mm -hmm. uh, it'll be fun for me to look back on what I was throwing last year and be like, idiot, why were you throwing that? You know? <laughs> yeah, last so. year you wrote the caddy book and this year you get to make the second edition. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm excited for the tournament. I think it's, you know, it's a good way to start the season. It kind of really throws you in right away. because Four big separate, days. Yeah, yeah, four big days, three separate courses. Like, it's it's a lot. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> and so Which of those I'm courses are you to. excited to attack again? Oh. <sighs> I, God, I don't know if I remember the names of them. <laughs> I know Wild Horse is one of them. And this <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think the Innova course is like the main course that they mm -hmm. play on the last day. That that one, I think, that one I definitely want to attack again. Um, I, I think that's the one that played twice, um, mm -hmm. and I didn't make the cut last year. So one of my goals is to make the cut this year, but... I'm hoping to uh, place a little higher than the bottom of the cut. Um, <laughs> oh, I think, I'm, I think that's going to happen. Yeah. I'm really excited about the field size too for the FPOs. Um, you know, I remember last year when there were 70 women at uh, Worlds and that was like a huge field. And now we're going to be regularly having like fields of 60 mm -hmm. or more for FPO this year, which is really, really exciting for me. And, you know, I'm excited to play with new people and just, you know, be able to let newer players get get exposed to uh pro tour and and what those professional tournaments are like what what's something you picked up uh on tour last year from some of the other players just yeah. your first year is a you know really out there yeah i think that before going on tour i hadn't really honestly played a whole lot of par fours um mm -hmm. <laughs> or par fives Mm -hmm. And like learning how to attack those kind of holes and, and getting to landing zones instead of just trying to throw it literally as far as I possibly could on the first throw mm -hmm. has definitely, I've definitely learned a lot from watching other pros play. Um, Cause some pros who might not really have, you know, what you imagine top tier distance are still able to birdie par fours and par fives because they know how to 
put themselves in the right spot for the next shot. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that has definitely helped me uh, with my game. Just thinking about, you know, if it's a six or 700 foot par four, Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily have to throw a full rip distance driver on the first shot. I can throw a mid or a fairway driver and just stay Get get to the better spot. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, and like, you know, I, I think my ego sort of always wants me to go for the big shot, but it's not mm-hmm. necessarily the right shot. So I yeah, think that know. that has, has helped me a lot. I think that's probably a thing that's plagued many golfers. Yeah. Thinking, it's like, Oh, I'm on the tee. So distance driver. Right. Right. Or just like, Oh, there's a pond that, you know, that at three seventy five, like I should just throw it over there and, it's mm-hmm. not necessarily the right shot. <laughs> did you get to watch any of the All Star Weekend? Mm-hmm. Yep, I did. It was it was really fun. It looked like a blast. I mean, I'm hopeful that I will be uh, part of it next year, and uh, probably would would want to do the distance competition. But that looked super fun. Well, I'm 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 glad we're rooting for that. I know you're rooting for that. Who would be mm-hmm. your first pick? Not yourself for distance accuracy and putting amongst your fellow uh fpo Ooh, that's a good question i imagine you know you'll have first pick so <laughs> i think i definitely would go with page for distance um okay i gotta get the brain working right now and you'd be right up there with her challenging yeah. for that that distance yeah, number i think so um third at the distance competition last year Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Accuracy. Accuracy, accuracy. Maybe Katrina. I feel like she does a really I mean, she has like one of the highest fairway hits on tour. And mm-hmm. you know, obviously I she probably wouldn't be available for a first pick, but um But in this dream scenario where yeah, you get to select I mean, each section. Yeah. I, a- I really choice. enjoyed playing with her. I think I only got to play with her once last year, but um I liked watching how she played and yeah, she's super accurate on her drives and her fairway right. hits and her upshots. Um, and she has the full arsenal. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then putting putting where the, where the bread gets buttered or the bagel gets cream cheese in this. Scenario. Probably got to go with Heather young. She's just, seems, she did take it down. She's just good at putting. She's very good at putting, you know, <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I mean, Missy, Missy's a top contender. She's a great putter. Um, but Heather just seems to like her range, you know, like most of the FPOs, like you kind of know what their range is. And Heather's sort of seems to be bigger than that. Mm. Man, there's Own also range. Own, though. Mm. Owns. I feel like Owns has that accuracy too. Because she's, she's not she's not out throwing anybody, but she's just yeah, putting it in the right spot every consistent. time. Yeah, I got to play with Own four rounds recently um at a at a tournament and I just loved watching her putt. She she was just amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So I it's a tie between Heather and Owen. I have to I'll I'll put it that way. <laughs> there you go. Two two solid competitors. Mm-hmm. Elle is another solid competitor. We're going to wrap things up here. We've been having a morning round sesh with our friend Ella. Uh, you want to shout out the rest of your sponsors? I know you're back with Upper Park, right? Yep. Yeah. Just shout out to Dismania, Upper Park, and obviously OTB um, hey. for supporting me, letting me get out on the road for my first full touring season. I'm really looking forward to it. And we'll be excited to be out there joining you in the van life. Stanley's working the board right now. We're going to be heading, hitting the road ourselves early next week doing the thing pro tour all year wrong it's been ella hansen in the house virtually thank you ella thank you greg have a good one you too everybody thanks for tuning in we're gonna have way more morning round content all season long so stay tuned to the otb podcast network